I am a sucker for Mexican food. I have traveled to all seven continents on our beautiful planet. And I was once bitten and dragged by a crocodile while filming a show about sharks. <laughs> Now I have your attention. Real quick, I'm okay. Crocodile's okay. Zero out of 10 recommend that experience because it hurt. But when I tell people about this experience, most of them wouldn't fault me for saying I hate crocodiles or I'm afraid of them. But I'm not. I don't hate them, and I'm not afraid of them. I'm afraid for them. In fact, I'm afraid for most animals on our planet because we live in a world of accelerated biodiversity loss, but we have limited resources that we can allocate to protect animals. So that means we have to think about how we allocate those resources. You see, our thoughts are powerful. They shape how we view the world and ultimately our decisions. How am I going to do my hair? What dress am I going to wear? And things that are a little bit more vital, such as determining the fate of an animal, life or death. What animal is worth conserving? Now, what if I told you one of our planet's fiercest predators is in danger of becoming extinct partly because of how we think about them? We've shared a planet with animals for as long as we can think, but few elicit the terror and the fear that sharks do. Now, I get it. I understand it. They're scary looking. But let me tell you something that's a little bit more fearsome than sharks more fearsome than an ocean filled with sharks. An ocean without them. Healthy oceans undoubtedly need healthy shark populations. They keep food webs in balance. Their mere presence alters the behavior of animals in their habitat. They bring millions of dollars to tourism worldwide. And, you know, they're the stars of practically every summer blockbuster movie. And they're really cool. Like, mind-blowingly cool. They've been around since dinosaurs. Sharks, in general, are older than trees. There are some as big as buses, and so small they fit in our hands. Some glow in the dark. If you don't think that's cool, you're wrong. <laughs> But unfortunately, sharks face a slew of threats that are putting them in peril. Overfishing, climate change, habitat degradation, Pollution, shark finning. So that means these predators that have been roaming our oceans for millions of years are in danger of disappearing. How's that for scary? They have more to fear from us than we do of them. And it might shock you to know that we weren't always afraid of sharks. Folklore shows the complex relationships that indigenous communities had with these animals. They were seen as gods who protect people, symbols of vengeance, tricksters. And what the folklore shows is how we portray animals matters. We love to hate our monsters, and that's a barrier to their very survival. Because arguments for their protection are being drowned out by headlines that are calling them monsters, man-eaters, killers. Look at how we talk about sharks, how we portray them. And it is no wonder we fear them. And it's not just sharks. There's a bunch of other animals who are in this same boat. Wolves, spiders, snakes. Now, our perception of an animal is based on a few things, such as their physical and their behavioral characteristics. Is it cute and fluffy? Is it small? Is it big? Is it something exotic or something we see every day? And when you think about it, oh, the argument for sharks doesn't look that good. And the media can bait us into thinking that all sharks are ugly monsters who are out there waiting for us to, well, ruin our beach day, really. Now, when I talk about sharks, usually it's something like, One of these. They're not really cute. They're 
big, they feel like sandpaper, they have rows of sharp teeth that are very easy to go through our skin. Yikes, I get it. But there's more sharks than these out there. There's over 500 different species, and they vary by size, diet, habitat, and the vast majority of them are harmless to humans. Now, what about these animals? Do you guys find them cute? Feel free to all. It'll get my, yeah, it'll get my point across faster. Because if you're sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, the tiny person's got a point, they're actually kind of cute. Surprise, those are sharks. They're sharks. You found them cute. You can't take it back now. <laughs> it shows how flexible our perception of animals can be when they're presented in a certain way. The media can destroy an animal's reputation, but it can also build it back up. Left shark from Katy Perry's Super Bowl, the one that I like that. Yeah, cultural icon, very relatable meme. Ikea shark. <laughs> Everybody loves Ikea shark. Brings much joy. This one's mine, you can't take him. <laughs> And of course, who on this planet does not know a rendition of baby shark? Oh, yeah, yeah, you all love it. There's so many of them out there right now. We love baby shark. We tend to think that humankind's right to leisure takes precedence over an animal's right to live in its very own environment. I'll give you an example. Oceans are commonly referred to as shark-infested waters. What? They've been around since the time of the dinosaurs. We ain't that old. Mm -mm. So that bit that we're saying that is ours? Not entirely true. And I'm not saying we can't go into the ocean. I'm saying we have to remember whose home it was first. And it's the same for the animals on land. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. All animals we've had run-ins with where either the person, the animal, or both have come away with fatal injuries. The story is always framed the same way. They were in our bit. The truth is, that's been their bit for way longer, and we need to learn how to coexist with animals for all of us to survive. If we want to protect sharks and other predators, our relationship needs to change. With nature, it needs to change. And that's going to start with you. I get it. Sharks need a PR manager, but that's why I'm here, showing them in a light that's a little bit different than what you normally see, because I'm asking you to think about how you talk about wildlife. Your words matter. I'm asking you to question headlines, look for the truth. And I'm asking you to, when you think about conservation, think about it in a way that has humans and animals coexisting. We have powerful thoughts. Our thoughts are powerful. And in order for us to be sure that Sharks and other monsters aren't just stories that we tell our kids and our grandkids. We have to make sure that we're making the right decisions. Your thoughts are powerful. They can determine the life of an animal. Life or death. Its fate is in your hands. What are you choosing? Gracias. <laughs>